I'm joined here today with Juan Santocono, our head designer here at T-Spline, and also Tom Finnegan, uh, one of our key T-Spline's developers. And so what, what the plan is today is to walk through actually how to use T-Splines for Rhino. Um, so I, we're assuming that everyone's downloaded the free trial, and the, uh, the purpose today is not to show necessarily why to use T-Splines, but actually show some of the nuts and bolts of how the software can be used. Um, we'll, we'll be focused overall in kind of two key thrusts. First, using T-Splines to design while you model. And then second, to focus on how you, you can use T-Splines to create nice blends and, tra and transitions. And we'll be focused on uh, learning these commands, the extrude, thicken, bridge, delete, merge, insert, etch, and convert to Rhino surface command. And just by understanding how to use these, these few commands, it really opens up the way that you can use T-Splines and use it as a powerful tool um, to save time and more quickly create free form flowing organic designs. So throughout the webinar, all the attendees are muted, but please um, ask questions throughout the webinar, and uh, Tom and Juan will either type back answers or else they'll alert me and we can address a question verbally. And uh, looking forward to doing this. So the, the way that we're going to attack this is we're going to be making uh, a ring with T-splines. And so here's the, uh, let me just open up my layers to show what the final ring is going to look like. It's going to be this heart ring with some nice um, blends and transitions and just a very smooth T-spline organic surface. But before we dive into making this entire ring, we're going to take a look at each of the key commands used during the ring and um, so that we can look and see how each of these commands works individually and then put them together when we actually make the ring. So the hope is that you can get a good understanding of these commands and use them in, in other settings in your work, and then we'll actually show how to apply it using this ring. So let's go ahead and just um, open up a new Rhino file and um, just start out showing each of these T-splines commands. So uh, the extrude command is something that can be used. Let's go ahead and actually pull up my T-splines toolbar. Let's go ahead and type toolbar, pull up T-splines, and we can, let's see, I'll use my toolbars with text for the webinar so that um, the brain can see what I'm using. Go ahead and close this out. So here's, here's our extrude command, and it can be used on edges, faces, and also on lines or curves. So let's go ahead and just lay out a rhino curve to see how this command can work. So I'm just going to just add a few control points here. And then I'll grab this curve and then open up my T-Spines manipulator. And when I open this up, then I have my heads up display, which tells me a lot of information about um, how I can be using T-Spines. And uh, this tells me that I have my translator manipu ma manipulator up. And if I just drag on this curve with the arrows, you can see it just moves the curve around in the scene. These disks will keep it in the plane. But if rather than moving this, I want to create a surface, then what I do is hold down my Alt key. So now I'm holding down Alt and just dragging this arrow, and you can see that now it's creating a surface. Let's turn on my shaded viewport and maximize perspective. Um, so I'm creating this T-spine surface just by dragging Alt and holding and uh, holding down Alt and dragging the manipulator. So let's do that again. You can see each time I do that, it adds a new row of T-spine spaces. Um, so this is just a very fast way to grow my surface. So I can also select these edges and hold down Alt and drag to increase my surface. So you can see here I'm, I'm creating this uh, organic T-spline form. You can see my tessellation is not, not very good. Um, I can improve that by opening up my T-splines options and changing my meshing to maybe high and you can see that will give that a little smoother mesh. Um, okay, so now that I have my uh, the surface pulled out, um, maybe what I would like to do is is create a tighter transition here. And so you can see this is a very very yeah okay. Um, you can see this is a very smooth transition. And so if I want to tighten this up, then we can use the uh, the T spines insert edge command. 
So just going back to our list, that's one of the, the commands that we're looking at. Um, so the way the insert edge command works is you just um, run the insert edge command. And I'll do it simple because that will tighten up my surface. And then I'll just, it just says to select the edge loop to be duplicated. So let's select this edge and hit enter. And then when I mouse over the surface, you can see there's this new edge that will be entered. So if I click it over here, you can see there's a new edge entered and suddenly the surface kind of pops out to be a, a tighter transition. Um, the reason why it's tighter now is because if we turn on our control points, you can see there's, there's more control points here in this area and where there's more control points, then the surface is, is tighter there. So I'm gonna undo this for a second, just hit undo and use the insert edge command one more time. This time when I click my edges, I'm going to say I want to insert on both sides. So now as I mouse over here, you can see there's edges going on both sides, and this gives me a more even uh, fillet-like surface there. Um, but again, this, this is still one single T-spline surface, so if I um, move my T-spline spaces even right there, I can still change how how the uh, how the surface looks and it will stay stay smooth and together so those are uh, those are two commands the extrude command and the insert edge command that we'll be um, using to create our t spline and and add some tight detail there so let's take a look at um, what what the other commands are that we'll be that we'll be looking at um, so we've done extrude, insert edge. Let's take a look at, at thicken and bridge. So one thing that the, the T-spline's thicken command does is it creates a, a solid from a surface. So it actually will give the, sur the T-spline surface some volume. So here's the thicken command, and I can grab this T-spline surface and hit enter. And you can see it gives me a, a UI that shows which way the, uh, the surface will, will be thickened. I can also just type in a, a distance, so say 2, and then the direction that I want it to go. And the surface will be thickened in that direction, so I'll go ahead and hit enter. And you can see this is now uh, a volume, and I can, it'll be more obvious if I move a face. You can see that this is now a thick surface. Usually when I use the thicken command, um, I like to uh, use one of the options here that lets us uh, crease the edges. So if I, do, if I do a creased edge and then hit 2, you can see now that's a nice, that's a nice uh, kind of creased edge there. And again, this is still a T-spine that can be, can be moved around. Um, so this, the, the thicken command will always work on your T-spline. It doesn't, it doesn't detect self-intersections, so sometimes if you have a really tight curvature, you need to go in and move it afterwards, but uh, depending on your, the tolerance or the specifications, it can be a very useful command to, to get a solid uh, very quickly. So now let's take a look at the, the bridge command. Um, and to do that, I'm going to uh, make a copy of the T-spline. Let's see, so let's go to object mode and just um, let's see copy and then I'll just go ahead and change to my rotate manipulator. And if I double click one of these rotation rings, then I can enter an exact rotation distance. So I'll rotate this 180 degrees. So now it's facing this way. Um, so what the uh, the bridge command does is it can take it can actually create a, a bridge or a transition between two separate T spline uh, surfaces. So let's go ahead and run this bridge command. I'm just selecting the faces that I want to bridge. And then I can show, there's all sorts of options about how many, what the preview is, how the bridge can be aligned. Um, you can see that these arrows need to be lined up and in the same spot. So if I, if I clicked it and have the arrows moved, you can see the bridge is kind of all twisty-like. Um, so you want to make sure that the arrows are in the same point in the same location so that it lines up correctly. Um, but then when I hit enter, 
you can see that it, it bridges it up nicely. And what this bridge has done is it's removed, we had this crease on our T-spline surface, and it's gone ahead and removed that crease um, by default so that it's nice and smooth. Um, if we want to add that crease back, then we can just go ahead and run the, the T-splines crease command to bring it back there. But you can see that the bridge by default gives you this nice smooth transition, um, and then you can continue to work with the, the T-spline surface. So that, that bridge there, this is a, a C2 transition that is created here. Um, okay, let's just take a look at some of the, the last commands that we're going to use before we jump into the uh, into actually making the rings. We've done extrude, we've done thicken, bridge, um, insert edge. So let's take a look at, at merge and delete. Um, so let's, let's take a, a few steps back and um, see where we, before we've thickened this T-spline. Here we just have a, a T-spline surface. And whereas bridge will actually create a surface, new surface in between uh, two T-splines surfaces, what merge will do is it will actually merge two surfaces together. So if we go ahead and copy this again, um, let's see, we need to turn off the T-splines control points. And then again, rotate this. Um, then what merge will do is it will actually merge these two edges together. So it, it, it does not need to be within any sort of tolerance. I mean, the closer you get, the less change there will be to the surface. But this merge edges command will let you select the first edge chain that you want merged. And then hit enter. And then this, the chain that you want the first one to be moved to And you can see that it actually creates a single, um, a single surface here. So we can again still we can go ahead and move this, uh, move this surface, and it updates. Just I mean, it, it is one surface. And um, merging, it doesn't have to have the same number of edges on either side. Like this could have twice as many edges as this one. Um, so we can show that by. I'm just going to run the subdivide face command to just subdivide all these faces. So we have like twice as many here now. And the merge command will, will still work if we, I'm just going to double click to select this whole edge. And then double click to select that whole edge. You can see it still merges nicely there. Um, coincidentally, these points right here, you see how this point tees off, um, that's still curvature continuous C2 smooth there. That's where that's where T-splines get their, get their name is from these T-points, which is how you can end local detail in the middle of a surface. Um, and the final command that we're going to look at is, is the delete command. And with the delete command, you can delete both edges and faces. So again, with, with T-splines, if you don't want detail in some part of the surface, you can just select edges that you don't want and hit the delete key or the, uh, also the delete command here. You can see it just removes those, and as it removes those edges, then the surface gets, um, I mean, it kind of flattens out because there's no longer that detail there. So that's a, that's a very nice way to keep your surface light um, without a lot of wrinkles in it. Um, another thing you can do, though, is you can delete faces of a T-spline model. So um, if I go to face mode, I can delete fa uh, faces to make a hole, say right here. And um, then you can move and manipulate the edges and, and vertices on the edge of the hole. 